All right, guys, it's going to be super exciting, super exciting, all right? EC-135 main rotor mass nut retorque. Man, boom, crazy, so exciting. But you know what? Don't worry, because there's going to be tons of monotone talking. When I start talking about the service bulletins here, one of them is the uh, 130, what is it, service bulletin 135 63023. That one is all about the new main rotor hub shaft nut, the new mass nut, okay? And what's the other one? EC-135-63016. Oh, that's all about sealing the mast. So exciting. Your eyes are going to glass over and you're going to probably start drooling like Biden. So, hey, anyway, let's go from there. Step by step. Real quick, we're going to go over how to do the mast nut retorque. And that's going to be on the new, new style mast nuts. And then we're just going to go over the service bulletins, like I just said. All right. Super fun and exciting actually probably very boring anyway let's go through it if we go to the ec-135 master servicing manual we go to chapter 05-52-00 roll down a little bit it says conditional inspection after installation of main rotor hub shaft and it's 150 hours after you install the the mast okay but there's a link it's amm that's the aircraft maintenance manual 05-52-00 6-8, and that's where we're going to go next. Also in the Master Servicing Manual, 05-25-00. If you keep scrolling down, scroll, 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 scroll. It says, retighten main rotor hub shaft nut with specified torque every 1,000 flight hours. This is for every aircraft, every version. All right? We click on that link that we just talked about. We're in the Aircraft Maintenance Manual now, and this is after installation of the main rotor hub shaft and conditional inspections after maintenance measures. All right? We scroll down just a little bit. It says retighten main rotor hub shaft nut to the specified torque. It gives you a AMM 623100 4-8. And remember what it says here, retighten, retighten, retighten. We're also going to use screenshots from the service bolt and the one for the new uh the new mass nut, the new style mass nut. Um, EC-135, it's actually service bolt in 63-023. There are good pictures in there, so we're going to do that too. Check that out. All right, I made this whole video, and I pretty much have to redo it because the instructions in this service bulletin are way better than the maintenance manual, all right? So we're going to pull most of the information out of the service bulletin, and we're going to go over that. The reason for the service bulletin is to give you a new style mass nut, the new style mass nut increases the interval for the inspection of the spacer tube from 1600 hours to 2000 hours, all right? Which is pretty good. And honestly, the new the new mass nut is way easier to install. It's way easier to retorque and it does save your spacer tube, I have found in my experience. So if you don't have it, get it. I mean, I'm not talking to the guys who know me. I'm just talking to people out there who are thinking about it anyway. Pretty sure our entire fleet has a new style mass nut. So the service bulletin actually has a section saying, it says, after accomplishment of the service bulletin, the pretensioning bolts of the rotor hub shaft nut must be retightened after 150 hours and once again after 1,000 hours, okay? And it gives you a straight up retorquing or retightening um, sequence for the bolts, for the pretensioning bolts. Go through it real fast. De-energize the helicopter. Remove transmission fairing. Got it. Drain, and, drain the oil out of the transmission. Remove the center ceiling panel in the cabin interior and the aft cabin paneling according to whatever. Remove the main transmission service cover in accordance with this chapter here. Remove rotor hubcap in accordance with whatever. You don't need to do that unless you have a problem with the, the mass nut seal. Next, number seven, remove the hubcap support. Don't need to do that. Disconnect both plugs from the sensor amplitude unit. Uh, don't need to do that either because you're not taking that thing off, okay? In the upper part of the main rotor hub shaft, remove the cable tie from the long antenna cable, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to do that either, okay? Remove the lower transmission cover from the main transmission, 17, figure 2. And there's three slots that are like for jack screws, so it's the same, it's the same bolt you use for the cover. You put in those three jack screw positions, and you nice and easy and evenly screw those down, and it'll pop that cover out. And when you do... There's enough oil in that cover that if it gets on you, it's going to make you pissed off. So, Caution. Pulling too hard on the antenna cable may damage it, or it may be torn off. Thanks for the tip. Remove the retaining ring 13 and 21 figure 2 from the rotor hub shaft nut. For this purpose, perform the following steps. 
Remove the three screws, 19, figure two. This is where it gets dicey, okay? You need to know what you have, um, which setup you have. There's like 100 variants, honestly. It shows you three here, but I'm pretty sure all the variants that we have are the closed retaining ring, and it has the mass seal, okay? So that's what we're going to go, go over, which is variant C, figure two. We're going to look at that. Undo all three nuts, 10, figure two. Do not remove them. Just loosen them, all right? Once you loosen up the three nuts that hold the seal together, you can just pull it out, man. Pull out the whole, um, you can pull out the whole retaining ring assembly, which has the seal attached to it. Because there's so much freaking oil up in there. Like, yeah, it's lubricated. It'll just pop out. But there might be oil in there, too, which will spill on you when you pull it out. But not as much as the lower cover of the transmission. All right. It says carefully withdraw the antenna cable slightly from the main rotor hub shaft. But it'll dangle there. Like, just tie it off. Like, you don't want it to let it dangle, but you can get to all the pre-tensioning bolts of the mass nut with that all attached. Okay, just tie it off with some with a safety wire or something to one of the holes. Not a big deal. Pull the retaining ring 21 together with the main rotor hub shaft seal, the bolt retaining sheet, and the rotor antenna out of the splines of the main rotor hub shaft. Pay attention to the ten, um, antenna cable. Like I said, you loosen up the three nuts that squeeze the seal together, and you can pull the whole freaking thing out, okay? Next says open retaining ring. We're not going over open retaining ring. I've only seen closed retaining ring. Effectivity all. Number 12, retighten the pre-tensioning bolts of the rotor hub shaft nut, the mass nut, as follows. Okay, this is what you want to do. It says make a mark on the heads of the pre-tensioning bolts with numbers 1 through 12 in sequence. But what you're going to do is you're going to go up there and you're going to clean, you're going to clean the heads of the bolts with like naphtha or something to get the oil off of it so that you can get a sharpie up there and label it 1 through 12. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Done. You just label it 1 through 12 in a clockwise direction. No big deal. I've, I've done a retorque on this. I think 150-hour retorque. And like all of those bolts were loose. They were like hand tight, which is really crazy. Anyway, not the end of the world because the mass nut won't back out. It just, there's no pressure on it. Um, that's a whole other story, but... Okay, so you marked on it 1 through 12. Awesome. Next, it says, Torque tighten the pretensioning bolts in the sequence 1, 8, 5, 12, 4, 9, 2, 10, 3, 7, 6, 11. Use the torque tightening 3 newton meters. After that, after you torqued it to 27, you change your torque wrench to 48 inch pounds. Between 47 and 48 inch pounds, and you torque it in the same sequence 1, 8, 5, 12, 4, 9, 2, 10, 3, 7, 6, 11. Cool. The service bulletin is the same as the maintenance manual on these steps, the torquing it, okay? That's effectivity all. Third step, same torque, 48 inch pounds, and you torque it 1 through 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, cool. Next step, four. Do it again. No, it says, well, well, number four is repeating forever until it doesn't spin, all right? Apply the torque again at 48 inch pounds in a sequence 1 through 12 until you cannot turn the bolts, okay? Because you'll have one that'll turn, one that will just move a little tiny bit each time you go around or whatever. So you end up going around like four or five, six times originally. On the retorque, I think I went, went around like three or four times just to make sure it was torqued. But and there's a note here. It says you can use your finger to make sure that the bolts do not turn when you torque them. Okay, thanks for that. And here's effectivity closed retaining ring. What do we do next? Press the antenna cable in through the bolts, blah, 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 blah. Read this stuff. Come here and read this, all right? Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. All right, next. Put the retaining ring assembly and the main rotor hub shaft seal, because they're together, into the, into the mast, the main rotor hub shaft. So you push it up there, and you need to make sure it goes the right way. You could rotate it 120 degrees. There's three different positions it'll fit in but one of them will line up your holes, your bolt holes. And then once you get it lined up right, just pop it in there. The seal will, the seal will fit in there nice and, nice and easy. There's a groove. It says make sure that the sealing lip of the um, seal engages the groove in the, in the mast. Not complicated. Then it says attach the retaining ring to the nut with the screws 9 and torque them to 40 to 48 inch pounds. That's these screws right here and right here. Next, most important, number 17, tighten the three nuts, number 10, figure two, for the main rotor hub shaft seal, the seal nuts, until there's two threads that protrude. I hate that word. Tighten the three nuts, number 10, figure two, for the main rotor hub shaft seal, 
until you can see two threads, all right? And this is for closed retaining ring, and you have to make sure you have the stack up correct. I've done this job, and I've seen it, the stack up done wrong. Anyway, you have to make sure the stack up is correct. If you have the closed retaining ring, you don't need this one spacer sheet, okay? If you have the closed retaining ring and the spacer sheet, and you have two threads or three threads, it's too much because it's, it's, you have too much torque on the bolts inside the seal, and you're going to wreck them. And then you're going to be the next guy who tries to loosen it up, and you can't, and you end up breaking the freaking bolt off of the, off of the rubber. Okay, what do we have here? We have three variants. This is all new mass nut style. We have open retaining ring with no mass seal. Variant B, we have open retaining ring, and then we also have the mass seal, the lower mass seal, which is 6-7, which is number 5, which is an assembly of that, okay? Variant C, we have closed... We have the closed retaining ring, which is number 21. Retaining ring is just like a big lock ring, all right? Anyway, variant C, closed retaining ring, number 21. No spacer there, you see that? No spacer number 8 like the other one, but also 6 and 7, which make up number 5, which is your lower mast nut seal, or your lower mast seal. All right? Cool. Not crazy, but just understand what you have. Like, look at this picture. Look at what you have. Figure it out. Make sure you have all the right pieces, okay? Effectivity all. Install lower cover on the main transmission. That's this. It references a different chapter to the manual. You can go there and get all the data, but it's right here. And also the Y strut. Great. Connect the plug for the mass moment. Add oil to the transmission. Maybe just add two quarts or two or three liters just so the bottom plate is covered. Look at the bottom plate. Make sure it's not leaking and then fill it up to where it needs to be, okay? It doesn't tell you to do that in the manual. That's too bad. Don't forget. Next, before you install the fuselage cover, do a functional test of the mass moment system. And this reference right here, look it up, but it just has you turn on the aircraft power, make sure your mass moment um, is lit up correctly, and it has you pull breakers and, and stuff like that. It's not complicated. Install main transmission service cover, which is the uh, fuselage panel. Connect both plugs to the sensor amplifier unit, which we don't need to do because the top should, the top is still connected. Unless you had a problem with the mass seal, you don't need to remove the rotor hubcap support, the rotor hubcap, you're all good, okay? Unless you have a problem with main rotor mass nut seal. And you put the interior panel back on and the med panel and all that stuff. Cool, that done. Oh, I'm sorry. Remove all tools and other materials and clean the work area. Good call. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, but after that, it says do a check of the mass moment indication. That is different. It's a different check. It's a different chapter. This is the one where you have to do the ground run, and it makes sure that the mass moment system sensitivity is correct. And I'll make a video on that one later on, but you run it up, and you, you bump the cyclic stick forward to certain spots, and then you have to check certain measurements to make sure, make sure when you move the cyclic a certain point, it moves the indication of the correct amount on the indication okay not complicated but when you read when you read that procedure it's it's not easy and this reference right here 560006-1 that's the whole ground run and functional check flight okay and the only part you're doing in there is just the mass moment on the ground okay cool so that's your retorque so the service bulletin we're talking about came out a while ago came out in uh what did it say 2010 and it's on the third revision. So we're just going to do a quick review of the service bulletin. It's EC 135-63-016. And it says improvement of the rotor mass seal and retrofit of a grommet. Okay. Why do we do this? Well, uh, the reason they came out with this, it says right here, the mass is protected against penetration of humidity and oil vapors, and then the transmission will also be protected against humidity. So you'll seal up the mast so there's no water that will come into the top of the mast or anywhere else and get water into your transmission, and then you're getting water in your soap samples, okay? Also, revision three, there's a grommet that can be installed on your mast nut or, or the lower seal, depending on what your setup is, to protect your antenna cable of the mast moment from chafing against, against there. And we'll show you all that. Revision 3 came out in 2016, and that is just for the grommet. So originally, underneath, inside your flower pot was a vent. They have you take the vent out, and you just they just have you put a bolt there now to seal it. And also on the bottom, they have you put this seal 
seal the bottom of the mast. And if you your seal gets all jacked up like I've seen in a couple times, then you have to go ahead and replace that. Not complicated. So the seal for the, the lower seal for your mast, part number L632 Mike 10X1102. It comes as a kit, both rubber pieces, the bolts are already in there, it comes with nuts, and it comes with washers. And it comes with that spacer, and you may need that spacer or you may not. Depends on your setup, you have to read the service bulletin. Goes on like that, pretty much. Part number's in the SB, so no big deal. There's your grommet, goes down there, depending on what your setup is, but that's where your grommet goes to protect that antenna cable from chafing. Grommet part number LN9240 8X2. So your grommet goes inside the retaining ring if you have the closed retaining ring, okay? Closed retaining ring. You have the open retaining ring then your grommet goes inside the compression ring, all right? And the other question is, why are there two masts here in this drawing? Well, one is the old style mast nut, and the other one is the new style mast nut, and the stack up is different. And the whole point of me even talking about this service bulletin right now is because if you're about to do a mast nut retorque, or you're about to do something with the mast, you may or may not have that grommet. There's a good chance you do not have that grommet. So if you don't have the grommet, Go ahead and order it before you even go to do this job so you have it. Again, part number LN9240-8X2. It's in the service bulletin. It goes right there, protects against chafing of the antenna wire. And right there, there's your grommet, there's your grommet, there's your grommet. Have I ever seen an antenna cable chafed? I have not, but can it happen? Yeah. So this video is just a refresher. It's just a review on your mass nut retorque. It's not complicated. So if the next time you go do this job is like three or four years from the last time, a little refresher might go a long way. You know what I mean? So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning into the video. I hope you found some value in the video. And if you did, uh, share it with some of the other guys who could use some help. All right. Appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.